This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. A whirlwind weekend for Buddy Heal. It all started with the rookie sophomore game, which kicked off NBA All-Star Weekend on Friday night. Playing for Team World, Buddy scored 19 points in the first half and looked in good shape to card off with the Most Valuable Player Award. In the second half, though, Buddy only able to come up with 9 points and his teammate Jamal Murray took over scoring 27 second half points en route to that MVP award as the World All-Stars defeated Team USA. Coaches like, give Jamal the ball and like, when the guy is hot, you can't stop him being hot. You know, you can't be selfish and say, okay, I want to show up, but you know, I want to show out and want to get MVP, but uh, he got hot, man. This wasn't my time, so, you know, he deserved it. For Buddy, All-Star Weekend would be the last time he played in New Orleans as a member of the home team. Late last night, Buddy was traded to the Sacramento Kings in a deal which sent DeMarcus Cousins to the Pelicans. This trade came as a surprise to many, but that is the nature of the business. Buddy now moving on to the next chapter in his life. But before he left the Big Easy, he got a chance to give back as he was part of an All-Star Special Olympics initiative. I get to see everybody, I get up and down, and uh, everybody from different countries, and uh, they mix it. I think the NBA did a really good job putting this world uh, thought, and uh, it was fun, man. Uh, getting to know them, and uh, having fun, and uh, seeing get a family have fun, and, uh, with the celebrities like Candace, and uh, Matumbo, and uh, Bugsy. So it's all fun. You know, it's still fun for them. You know? They still want to get there and have fun and uh, compete, because uh, they look at us as, uh, as uh, heroes and uh, celebrities for them, so uh, it's good to, for them to come out there, and they all have a big smile on their face. Bahamian descendant Eric Gordon also making headlines at All-Star Weekend. The Houston Rockets guard won the three-point contest, beating Cleveland's Kyrie Irving in the finals. A soft opening taking place this morning for the CONCACAF Beach Soccer Championships. Our Charles Fisher was there. Teams kicking it in the sun before competition begins. A commemorative plaque unveiled near the Bahamas Football Association office during a short ceremony on Monday morning. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works, the Honorable Philip Davis, pleased with the work done on the stadium, calling it a special day. I would just like our constituents out there, that is the Bahamian citizens and residents, to recognize that this is a significant event that is being hosted and that they should support it and recognize that we are lifting up the Bahamas to the whole world. Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Dr. Daniel Johnson, making a kick for more of these on the island. Consistent with you on the Prime Minister's views that we should have facilities that are world class, we should have academies that are world class, and we should have management that is world class. We have the NSA here and their entire brand that is emerging, and then you'll see what we say about academies, which is the best exposure to the best brands in the world. The Deputy Prime Minister thanked all those that have helped in bringing the tournament to the Bahamas and the construction of the stadium and did the official honours. Let the games begin and let the Bahamas shine. Official game balls were given to the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture and National Sports Authority Chairman Lyndon Maycock. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. Over the weekend, the nation's chief prime minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, toured the new beach soccer facility and he gave it his stamp of approval. Many years ago, I indicated to Mr. Roskam in his first stint as the Minister of Tourism that we had to commit to sports tourism we, in all of its diverse forms, that the Bahamas had truly demonstrated our capacity internationally in sports and that we had to broaden and deepen um, our involvement in it as a nation and therefore also as offering to the world a place where they could come and spend their money but at the same time participate or watch international functions and international games and international events. And so for me, I'm so pleased to see um, that we have now reached that stage where I can certify that this is just another giant step we have taken um, in association with the gentlemen who run football in our country. To go along with the CONCACAF Championships, another big event also taking place this week here in the 242. The Olympic Committee along with Interpol will be having an all-day sports integrity um, workshop here for 
all the executives who are involved in sports and all the coaches. And this is because they have seen the Bahamas now so busy with sports for this year. Our calendar is full. They want to make sure that our coaches and our executive and all of us are up to date on sports manipulations because that, that sports is a global thing and our athletes travel all over the world to compete globally. So they want to make sure that you know they are up to date with the rules. From the college swimming season over the weekend, Laura Morley making the eighth final of the 200-yard breaststroke at the Big Ten Championships. She finished eighth in 211.72, a B qualifier for the NCAAs. Morley also sixth in the B final of the 100 breaststroke in 101.54. Meantime, at the SEC Championships, Aubrey Higgs made the B final of the 200 breaststroke. She finished fifth in 211.49. That was also a B cut. The St. Valentine's Catch Me If You Can Regatta, all history now. Julian Gibson has a recap. Benson, Eliezer, Barber J. Johnson will be bragging until next year because his Campari lady, Natalie, she was able to hold off five A-class boats. Tell them to try again, because if they put 10 minutes, I still would have beat them. This is a big day for Lady Natalie, and this is a day like Martin Luther King. I, re I reached the top of the mountain. Thank God for that. For Clyde Rule, who was at the tiller, he knew going into the race, he had his hands full, but the better conditions worked out pretty good for the Campari Lady Natalie. We started out with the perfect win. I had about uh, 12 to 14 miles an hour win. And before the race is over, it dropped down to 8 to 10. And I told them anything under 14 miles an hour win, they will never catch us. Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned, check on weather still to come.